hip hop, hip hop and the rap community has really gravitated toward this mic for the sound quality and the tone quality that you can get from the voice. Let's pray. The mayor. What do major industry rappers like Travis Scott, Lil Wayne, Drake? and DJ Khaled have in common. Besides being artists at the highest level, they all use the Sony C800G microphone. On today's video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at this microphone, why some rappers can't live without it, and why others absolutely hate it. There's lots of thoughts about the C800. Uh, I hate that mic. I said, whatever you do, not a C800. Just please, please, not a C800. Got the Sony mic, some laptops, and just like some nice gear, and that's all. That's all you need at the end of the day. The Sony C800 G was released in 1992. With the C800 G, Sony wanted to make the ultimate microphone. Not only did they have a team of genius Japanese scientists working behind the scenes to develop this mic, they also conscripted recording legends George Massenberg and Alan Sides to help with the production of the mic. Upon release, the mic became an instant hit amongst top artists. This was mostly due to its bright and airy sound, which gave the vocal instant polish, something that many of the vintage mics at the time didn't necessarily have right off the bat. In essence, it was a cheat code. Like, hey. I think that people love it because it gets you to a desired result fast. You know, I, I prefer the C800 uh, over just, uh, C800 works on, on most records. It, it, it just cuts through a little easier right from the get with certain voices. Oh, I see, uh, I see. One great example of this was when Dr. Dre first heard the mic, he instantly bought two of them. The Sony C800 mic, Dre still uses it to the day. Dre got on the mic, he did that. He said, Big Rick, what kind of mic is this? I said, it's a new Sony. It just came out. I said, it's about uh, six to $8,000. Dre recorded his vocal. He came out, called his guy up, and said, buy me two of these Sony microphones right now. And also because the mic was not vintage at the time and its modern manufacturing process meant that the C800 is more consistent studio to studio than other mics. They're, they're just not as consistent, you know what I mean? Like, like, like every, mic A will differ from mic B and mic C and that's why I like using the C800 and the 1073 um, with either a CL1B or TLA100 uh, or something like that for recording because I know they're always going to sound the same or at least they're going to be, they're still going to sound closer to, there's not going to be as bigger differences, you know what I mean? As I said earlier, the C800 was a cheat code, but sometimes cheating isn't the best. While the mic was known for its airy and instantly gratifying sound, the C800 slowly gained the reputation for accentuating really harsh frequencies for certain vocalists and rappers. And this became even more of a problem once recording moved into the digital age. I said, whatever you do, not a C800. Just please, please, not a C800. Because when you do have the E, that C800 is deadly. On, on that vocal, it sounded like a C800. It was just like, ah, crazy top end. Uh, I hate that mic. Yeah. I hate it. Um, I don't understand why everyone thinks it's great. I'll like rant about it for like a minute and a half. Like, hey. I think that people love it because it gets you to a desired result fast, but it's too overcooked. So you have to back it off after the fact. I think there are better mics that <clears throat> you can use a little EQ to get a better version of that top end. It, to me, it sounds like there's a compressed... Um, 10k and up. This led many to gravitate towards the Telefunken 251 microphone instead. It had the air of the C800, but had a much more delicate and vintage quality. It's, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like everyone says C800, everyone says Telefunken 251, but the question isn't what microphone you're using. The question is, what microphone does the person that you're about to work with sound better? So with Chris specifically, his voice is more nasally and mid-ranging. Mm. The C800, in comparison right, in relativity to the 251 <laughs> is a little bit more mid-rangey and the 251 in comparison to the C800 is slightly more toppy, a little more air. Now, Chris's voice would, could do with a little more air and not something that is accentuating some of the mid-ranginess. Yeah. That's why I choose that microphone. But as time went on, one thing began to reveal itself about the C800. Engineers began to notice that not all of them were made equal. Many engineers say that as time went on, the microphone slowly became more harsh and more bright, making the early 90s units the rarest and the most expensive. In hundreds, so I, that was like one of my first times really like hearing one. I was like, dude, this is so freaking bright. Who was it? My friend Genzo? I can't remember who it was. And was like, hey, this thing is way brighter than my 800. I'm like, dude, I'll, I send, I'll send <laughs> you the files. Here's the AB files. And he's like, yeah, no, that sounds exactly the same. He's like... 
Well, let, let me bring over my 800. And his 800, I think, was from 2001, so 14 years prior. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it was the same character of Mike, but way less bright. Uh, apparently, what, ha what happens is either Sony was doing something different later on in the production. Maybe it was a capsule. Maybe, I mean, it could, there's so many things in a mic that right. determine the sound. I mean, yeah. they go, oh, it's a capsule or the tube. It can, like, literally, the, the capsule capacitors can change the sound completely. My C eight hundred G is mid nineties, immaculate, Classic. Classic. still sounds incredible. <laughs> like the day I bought it. Now, almost thirty years later from its release, the C eight hundred has essentially become a vintage microphone. At the moment, I believe Sony has ceased the production, causing these mics, especially the vintage ones, to go for astronomical prices. What good is any microphone if the studio you're recording in is terrible? Unfortunately, most of y'all's home studios and bedroom studios are very poorly designed, which is hindering the results of your mixes and production. But to fix this, I've teamed up with Grammy-nominated mastering engineer and acoustics expert Gerhard was failing to bring you the acoustics course. In this course, we'll take you through the start to finish process of designing and building the the perfect home studio, no matter what the conditions are. It goes over everything from measuring your home studio to find flaws, all the way to building some of the most affordable and cost-effective acoustic treatment on the market. If you want the free studio design checklist and acoustic treatment build plans, just click the link in the description below and head to www.jorgtmusic to find out more. I hope you all enjoyed this video taking a look at the C800G microphone. If you want more content like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Anyways, I'll see you all later. Bye.